Hello everyone and welcome to the last video of this uh, lecture, a lecture about network coded cooperative networks uh, for uh, the cooperative communication system course in, uh, the, for the, in the Deutsche Telekom Chair of Communication Networks. In this lecture, uh, we are going uh, in this this video. We are going now we have, that we have the architecture. We are going to talk about the models that uh, we are developing, and I mean mainly about the the results uh, regarding the analytical models that we have and the evaluation on on a, on a real testbed, and then some some conclusion. So. Uh, regarding the analytic uh, model, what we did was a Markov uh, a Markov uh, chain model, uh, simple, uh, with uh, these uh, parameter settings. I will go uh, with uh, with each parameter setting that I consider important, uh, and uh, we will analyze uh, it. Good. So the generation size the block uh, size of the of network coding is uh, 100 packets then uh, the field size uh, for in our case it's uh, not important okay it's just like the range and uh, the coefficients of network uh, of the network coding that uh, these coefficients can can take okay two would be zero or one two to the eight would be from zero to two to 55 then the cloud size which is the number of UEs that are going to be inside this mobile cloud. The desired reliability, which is uh, how, like, how, how good I want in the end to, to, to the stream to, to be. So what is the, the least error that I want? In the end, we cannot, we cannot always, we cannot say uh, that I'm going to transmit uh, and I'm 100% sure that 100% of the packets are going to be sent. So. Uh, I can say that I have a 95% confidence that the error will be less than uh, 1 minus 10 to the to minus 5, something like this. Then the packet erasure rate, uh, rate which is mainly the uh, channel, the channel uh, error rate, which it could be 0, 0, 0 0.02, 0 0.04, 0 0.08, or 0 0.16. Okay, there's a mistake in here. It's not uh, 0.2, but 0 0.0. Then this, uh, the rest, uh, the subframe uh, duration, uh, it's more uh, from the physical layer, which is the typical one millisecond for LDE. And the packet length, which is uh, this uh, 1,470 bytes. And the data rate that we are using for LTE and Wi-Fi is 11.76 uh, megabits per second. Uh, which uh, it has a it has a explanation, but uh, uh, it's uh, I I mean I don't think uh, it is, should be in the scope of this of this video. So if you're interested, you can of course uh, ask it. Or I, I will sh uh, share you the paper with, where I where we uh, did this, and then uh, the power consumption because we want to ana to analyze how uh, how if it's energy efficient or not. So uh, the LTE power consumption to receive from LTE, the power consumption to transmit from LTE, and the power consumption to trans to from receive and transmit uh, in Wi-Fi. So uh, the first uh, thing regarding the analytic model that we studied was the number of redundancies or the, or the number of pa uh, coded uh, packet transmissions that we need to send depending on the number the, the, the cloud the cloud size and depending on the error rate and uh, what we saw was that obviously the more the error rate the more number of coded packet transmissions uh, we are we are going to need and and also an, 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 an fi a finding was that the, the more the more the the users are the less number of uh, pack coded uh, packet transmissions uh, we are going to we are going to need as you can see, uh, as you can see in the in the graph. Then we have the throughput per UE. In this model, uh, we are go uh, we said that the throughput in the LTE is the same throughput as the throughput in Wi-Fi. And plus, uh, we said that the this uh, this two we will not have two antennas in the UEs, which means that we will either receive from the cellular network or send or transmit from 
the Wi-Fi network. This, in the end, makes that the throughput is going to be re reduced. This is what there's not only there's only this this possibility. The rate on how the throughput is reduced. So we said that the base was around uh, 11 uh, megabits per second. So we see that for an, for different cloud size, more or less it, it stays the same when we, re we reach four uh, nodes and then it stays, it stays the same. And the throughput achieved, uh, it of course uh, is reduced. Uh, the more, the more uh, error in the channel uh, we have. The, mo the most important thing to consider here is that, as I said, uh, we have this uh, only one single antenna. If we have two antennas, we are actually increasing the throughput. This is something that we need to consider and in the case of, in, depending on the model, uh, decide uh, which one do we go want and are we able to, 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 to have. Because it may happen that the smartphones do not have uh, two antennas that can work at the same time. Then, regarding the energy consumption, uh, uh, exactly uh, the same. We analyzed the energy consumption for Wi-Fi transmission, Wi-Fi reception, and the LTE reception. What we varied was the number of users that are in the cloud, from zero to 100. And uh, we uh, this so this is an average uh, per per UE, and it is normalized. So 100. Um, is the one? Uh, no, sorry. It's so it's not normalized. It's um, so it starts with uh, with uh, with one so in the for for one user it's all LTA reception and then it will it will decrease at the rate of one divided by the number of users so 100 then would be uh, 50 percent then will be 25 percent uh, 33 percent 25 percent 20 percent and so on regarding the Wi-Fi uh, transmission, in the in the beginning, we will transmit more because we are going to receive more. So if we, if I am, if we are two users in the cloud, uh, I will receive fifty percent of the video or of the file, uh, plus some re redundancies, of course. And this is the one that I will have to transmit into the Wi-Fi channel. Uh, however, if we are ten users, this will be reduced because I will only receive ten percent, and I will only have to transmit ten percent. That's the reason why the energy of the Wi-Fi transmission is reduced as well. And it is reduced also at a similar rate as the one in the, in the, in the LTA reception. Regarding the Wi-Fi reception, of course, the more users we are, the, so the, the parts that we are not transmitting, that means that we are going to receive them. So in the end, uh, Will this this Wi-Fi reception uh, energy uh, will increase uh, will increase uh, uh, in the more the more users we are we have in the cloud. We did uh, two different models: a simplified one and a joint one. Uh, here I want to show uh, the absolute error of uh, both of them for the number of, uh, number of uh, coded packet transmissions as so for the number of uh, retransmissions uh, sorry the number of redundancies that uh, we do and as we can see in the model uh, we see that the the error is around 10 mi uh, to the minus 3 10 to the minus 4 it even goes to 10 to the minus 6 uh, when we increase the number of Code, uh, pa uh, code packet transmissions. What I'm saying with this is that the model that we developed, uh, the, uh, the analytical model, uh, was was good because the absolute error was uh, was close to the was was small. I mean, close to zero. Then we did also a testbed. Uh, in this testbed, what, I, what the scenario that we did wa was we had a, a video server with one 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 video stream uh, in a in a cloud in a Amazon Amazon one, uh, Web Services cloud, uh, and this was connected to, to the to the internet of course, and then we had here in our in our uh, in our in our chair four different users, uh, sorry eight different users. 
uh, connected to a Wi-Fi access point that was performing a uh, multicast. So we, these users uh, had also an LTE dongle that was connected to the antenna, and I, we were receiving around one eighth of the video, a little bit more, as, we, as you can see in the image, plus the network coding uh, redundancies. And this was re being received and multicast into the wi uh, through the Wi-Fi internet in interface. On the right side, we you can see uh, the element that we were using, the description of the element, and the specifications. Just uh, because uh, you you may you may uh, be interested in the, the the hardware that we were using. In the end, we were displaying this video in LCD screens, uh, as you can I mean, you, as you can see also in the in the table. Regarding the parameters that we are, were using, uh, we were using uh, di uh, slightly different parameters than in the than in the in the analytic model. Mainly because for the analytic model, it might be easier to understand. For example, for 100 packets, because it's like a it's a, a rounded round number. But uh, in a real scenario, we normally have uh, numbers that are from the power of two. So in this case, we use 32 packets. Regarding the field size, uh, we decided to use 2 to the 8 because this uh, this means that the likelihood that we are going to receive uh, linear dependent packets is going to be less. And this is what we wanted to reduce a little bit the, the, the chances to have useless packets. Then the cloud size we're going to change. So we have uh, in this example, uh, in this picture we had 8, but we are actually going to, to move it a little bit from 2 to uh, 16 UEs. I, I, I say already that the, uh, the values with uh, 16 UEs uh, uh, and with 2 uh, they were very bad so uh, we already uh, cropped them out in the, in, the, in the simulations, I mean in the, in, the, in the graphs. Then the coding ratio, we are working uh, from one from a coding ratio of uh, 104 to 116. So what does exactly this value mean? Well, uh, the coding ratio would mean that for a user that receives the packets, for every 100% of the generation, I am going to send 100, uh, uh, 104, for example, for 104, 104 packets. So what I do is I take these 32 packets, then I do the 100, uh, 104%, and then I always uh, go to the packet that is, uh, so to, to, the, to the integer that is uh, over, to, to have an extra uh, redundancy. Then uh, we have the packet erasure uh, rate, uh, which is the the packet erasure rate is the, the, the erasure rate of the Wi-Fi channel. Okay, so uh, what is the percentage uh, from zero to one? So in this case, it would be ten percent uh, of the packets that would be lost. We are going to simulate packets lost by just dropping them. The subframe dur duration is going to be the same. The payload size is going to be uh, 100, uh, 1400 bytes. The data rate and the power consumption is going to is going to be the same for for all of them, as as well as in the in the model. So the first thing we test uh, we tested was the loss probability. Uh, so first uh, we we got the the CDF, the cumulative distribution function, and I'm going to first explain how this works. So let's go to the left uh, left uh, plot. And to that line that look uh, looks, let, uh, we're not going to talk about what it is right now. Just uh, to see what what this means. Okay. So we have uh, this line uh, that is uh, apart from the rest, and what we are saying is regarding loss probability, it means that there is a, a 0.7 out of one, so a 70% chances that uh, the loss probability is 1.0 or less. It also says, for example, that there is a 0.4 uh, percent chances that the loss probability is 0.7 percent, something like this. Okay, this is how you have to read this uh, this uh, CDF. Now, uh, so we did the, loss the CDF of the loss probability uh, for different uh, amount of coding ratio and for different amount of users inside the mobile cloud. 
for the different amount of coding ratio on the, le on the left, the users on the right. Uh, we saw uh, interesting things. Uh, we saw, for example, that uh, if, so the first line on to the right is the so the the, the the more to the right is going to be the worst. Uh, the the one to the right is the 104, and then if we go to 108 is the purple one. Then if we go to the 112 is the is the uh, green one, the dark green one, which is the best one. And then if we increase it more, we go to 116. Which is, uh, which is which is worse than 112. Uh, after doing some evaluation, uh, we saw that more or less the uh, amount of coding ratio that we need, the optimal one, is going to be more or less the, loss, the losses of the multicast. Of course, in the case that there is no losses in the cellular network. And uh, more or less uh, the same happens also if we increase the number of users. If we go to the right, to the right of, the, or of, of, of our screen, we'll see that we have for n equals 2, so for 2 users, the performance is, is worse than for the rest, then we will have the 4 users. And then if we go to the 8, to eight users, we see that the, it, is the best, it, it gets the best performance, it gets a, it, it gets a better performance than uh, for n equals 16. The reason why this is happening is because uh, the more users we have or the more coding ratio we have we are also congesting more the Wi-Fi network so uh, in the end we just need the amount of, of, of resources necessary so that the video and the losses are reduced to a certain amount if uh, we send too much uh, too many video too many packets what would happen is that the queues will increase and in the end we will lose even more and that's something that we don't want so uh, we try to get to look for the for the optimal number of users and for the optimal coding uh, coding ratio. Okay. Then, regarding the latency, we also evaluated the la latency uh, on the system for uh, different uh, coding ratios. What uh, what we saw here is uh, the same uh, that uh, the coding ratio for one twelve is actually better than. The, uh, the one for the for the, for the rest and uh, that for 116 it goes a little bit uh, worse than than this one 112 this uh, graph is a little bit uh, complex to to explain so i will go step by step that's why i have divided the it, it into the different sections we have uh, five different sections so let's start the first section the first line is uh, line a which establishes what is the minimum latency that we can actually uh, think of when the packet is sent, received, and automatically reco uh, automatically deco decoded, uh, which is around 20 milliseconds, uh, more or less. Uh, then we have line B. This line B are the packets that uh, are received and they are stored uh, in this uh, in this generation this block and we have to wait a little bit until they are able to be decoded because uh, maybe uh, we receive the coded packet but we uh, what we need more packets uh, to perform this matrix this matrix uh, this gaussian elimination and of course we will be receiving the packets in T1, T2, T equals 3, T4, T5, and in T5 we are able to decode 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the latency of T1 is going to be one time slot uh, bigger than the latency of, T2, uh, of the packet in T2. So in the end we have this, uh, this slope that you can see in B. Then uh, we have C. C is just, uh, it's a parameter that we are, that we are including. Uh, which is the timeout that uh, w may happen if we lose, lose one packet because if we lose one packet we are not going to be waiting indefinitely the idea is that network R RLNC um, delivers the, the, the packets in order so if I don't receive packet N I will not send out uh, if, I don't, if I don't decode packet, uh, packet N I will not uh, decode packet uh, N plus one I will wait so this is what, what's happening uh, this is just the waiting period that we that we have, which is uh, for our case 500 milliseconds. It is very big, but 
uh, it depends of course on the technology and on the application that we that we want um, probably around 150 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds would be a better a better value but in this case this is what uh, this line c does then we have line d line d is a little bit more uh, complex to understand so let's uh, so we are already in the area that we are losing the packet okay but uh, this packet uh, does not arrive does not arrive and then it gets to a point that it arrives what happens in this case let's suppose we have generation 1 and we lose a packet number 10 okay and the generation size is 32 if we lose the packet 10 there will be around 20 packets from this generation that will be stored and wait because they will wait uh, because of the, of how the nature of RLNC works as i said it gives in order delivery so we have these 20 packets for generation 2 they will also wait but this time we have 32 packets for generation 3 we have also 32 packets let's say the timeout breaks in generation 4 that means that we forget about the packet that we lost in generation 1 and we are going to retrieve the, the, all the packets from generation 1 the, these 20 packets 32 packets from generation 2 and 32 packets from generation 3 what does this mean? if, if all the packets arrive at the same pace this means that uh, we will have a, a line a complete with a, a normal slope uh, for the generation uh, 2 and 3 but uh, for generation, uh, because we will have also, we will have uh, 32 packets but in generation 1 we will not have 32 packets we will have only 20 what does this mean? this means that the packets the 20, these 20 packets, which is a, a, a smaller than number than 32 uh, are, so this smaller number has more latency uh, or, or yeah, uh, re, like appreciates more latency than uh, the, thir the 32 packets from the later generations this means that the, the amount of packets that see more latency is smaller and uh, the, uh, the amount of packets that uh, appreciate less latency is bigger that's why we don't have a normal, uh, a normal uh, linear slope so we have in the beginning looks quite linear but we see that in the end it's, it's not really linear okay? this is exactly because of this, uh, this phenomenon which is that uh, the, we are not losing the packet uh, we don't know when we lose the packet so we, we may lo lose the, number, the packet number 1 of the generation or the packet number 10 of the generation or, of, or the packet number 20 of the generation and the rest will wait and the rest of the packets the remaining packets of that generation is always going to be a, pack, a number smaller than the whole generation I hope this was uh, this was not uh, too hard. If you have any questions, of course you can always uh, message me. I will be glad to to, to uh, answer you uh, again. Then uh, letter E, which I it just uh, says the pa the packets that have an infinite latency, which means packets that have been lost that are not being uh, able to be recovered at all. Then we did also some uh, tests about the synchronicity. Okay, in this uh, I just put two examples: one uh, for uh, one client and different coding rates, and then one for uh, one single coding rate and different clients. So let's start with the with the left one. What I wanted to see here is uh, just for one single client, and uh, I sent one thousand packets, uh, ten thousand packets, and I wanted to see. Uh, when they are going to to arrive mainly and we see that for example uh, for a good coding ratio like could be coding ratio 12 in the end the total latency is it is reduced and sometimes we lose some 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 packets when we lose some when we lose some packets what uh, it happens is um, what we were seeing in the in the latency we stop it for a long time and then we receive all the packets at the at the same time with the code you can see that be, be, maybe better in the in the right in the right uh, graph so uh, talking about the about the right graph 
So we have here different clients that you actually cannot see the difference. And this is happening just because the system is so synchronous that they are all receiving the packets at the same time. Sometimes uh, there are some errors and uh, some of the clients lose uh, one packet. As you can see, these are the horizontal lines that you can see. Normally you would see the same, the same slope, but sometimes there are clients that lose, lose some packets. In this case, what happens is just that this client, specifically this client, will wait will not find any 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 packet to to the code and when the timeout is triggered it will retrieve all the packets and uh, and uh, will continue with the with us uh, with the same as uh, with the, with the rest of their of their of their peers so uh, we built a demonstrator uh, we build a wired demonstrator uh, for a mobile world congress Barcelona uh, called uh, Nokia Stadium uh, Experience, where we had uh, this video server was sending uh, over Nokia over one uh, 5G Nokia network simulator to four different clients via Ethernet. So in this case, it was only wired, and you you can see here, for example, the the screens, and we were playing a, a match. And then we, we had also the wireless implementation. In this case, we had these dangles that I, I was explaining in the in the beginning in the in the not in the architecture in the uh, 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 in the map with the with the Amazon Web Service and so on. And in this uh, implementation, uh, we presented in CCNC Las Vegas and in the Consumer Electronics Show in 2018. We had this video server in a cloud service in Frankfurt that we were sending it through LTE and it was co cooperating through a 5 GHz multicast Wi-Fi. As you can see there, uh, we had some different graphs about uh, the energy consumption and uh, the energy uh, efficiency. Mainly, the, in the end, uh, are the graphs that you, you, uh, you saw in this, in this video. With also for for videos, you can see also you can appreciate in the in the in the picture that the videos are completely synchronous. So uh, we are uh, arriving to the to the end of the lecture and uh, the conclusion of this uh, of this lecture. So uh, the main takeaway is uh, that cellular networks are right now facing a scenario of multiple users that are generating massive amount of mobile video traffic. And uh, we need uh, ways to uh, offload this traffic and uh, to, improve, in, to increase the, the, the throughput and maintaining also a low energy consumption. So network coded cooperation is a data dissemination scheme that uh, benefits from the interplay between network coding and cooperation or mobile clouds. With NCC, what we do is we increase the throughput, we reduce the energy consumption in both the uh, UE. We have seen only the energy consumption in the UE, but uh, since we reduce the number of transmissions in the inode B, uh, and if we keep the number of the same number of users, we will also reduce the energy consumption in the inode B, and we'll uh, and we will also offload the cellular traffic as we saw from the uh, LTE traffic to the to the to Wi-Fi. As a drawback, we see that NCC systems uh, will increase the end-to-end -end latency to, for having uh, these extra hopes, and mainly to uh, because uh, because also we need to encode and decode, and also uh, to increase the complexity requirement on the devices because uh, each de each device will need to perform uh, to perform the network coding recoding. And uh, that uh, that's it. I, I hope you like it and you find it interesting. If uh, you have any questions, uh, you can always send me a, an email or uh, uh, yeah, contact me. My 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 uh, email address is uh, on the web page. And uh, if you have, uh, as I said, if you have any questions, I will be glad to to help you. Thank you.